So my apologies, our apologies, we're starting a little bit behind, okay? But my name is Courtney Thomas. I serve as the manager of community encouragement here at Coral Cliff, and I manage the OG program. I brought that program about two, three years ago to our facility because I wanted to create a space for you guys to get together, have some social hour, have some fun, and also have some educational resources provided back to you, okay? Um, so that, that is what the OG is for. Uh, my good uh, Uncle BJ decided to change the name and what OG stood for. And so I'll let him give you a little bit of uh, uh, background of why we changed that name. <laughs> I, I think uh, OG. When we go and if you didn't know, uh, Coral Cliff, we are celebrating our 10 year anniversary, August 6th. Um, here on our 10 acres of land in the back in our backyard uh, for our back to school festival. So come out, that's August 5th. Our Juneteenth festival, I believe, is June 15th. It will be in the backyard too. It will be a family picnic celebration. Anything that Coral Cliff offers to the community is at no cost. None. We do not charge you for Don't anything. Bring Don't bring you um, Because we just want to make sure that y'all have access. So that is the most important thing for us. Uh, we have our partners here, and I'll let them introduce themselves in a minute. But again, like I said, it's a, it's a space where you got to have fun, but also get resources, okay? Amen. World Cliff aims to liberate Oak Cliff from systemic oppression. That is our mission. And so we do that through a dual gym model. Not only do we work with the adults, we work with the kids. We provide so many programs up here, academic enrichment, um, sports enrichment, gaming enrichment for the kids. Literacy Saturday, so that extra boost of support because we know the tests are coming around. So if you got any grandkids that need that boost of uh, support that's in that elementary age group, Miss Eunice Wells serves as the director of out of school time here, and that is the resources and services that we provide. We have a phlebotomy program that we offer every spring and fall. That is a 10-week program, and you can be as young as 16 years of age to join that 10-week program. All you have to have is a date that you're graduating, okay? Um, outside of that, if you're an adult, you can come join the program. If you know anybody that needs a GED, you can come join that program. Again, not a cost, it's self-paced. We do not start a class or a cohort in GED and just hope that you be finished. We know life operates on lifetime, okay? So we, we work with you on your time. And so now I'm going to let our partners that came today um, to introduce themselves, tell you a little bit of what they do and what they uh, plan to do and support you guys, okay? Um, okay, good, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I want to first of all say thanks for coming out, and uh, I want to thank Paul Cliff for allowing us to be partners today. So uh, we... Christy, Penn, and myself are here representing our doctor's office. We're a senior-centric doctor's office. We only deal with seniors, and just like Courtney said, at no cost. We're affordable health care. So we provide courtesy transportation. We, we provide um, extended, uh, extended life uh, nuances in our doctor's office. We're a futuristic doctor's office in, in the present day and era our own in-house laboratory. And so what Christy and I would like to do, we would like for those of you who are slightly interested, even if you have a good rapport with your primary care physician, come see what else is out there. Because some folks are so used to the same, they go with the trend, and like they only see their doctors two or three times a year. And as we age, our bodies deteriorate and slow down, which you, we all know. So um, every time you come to dedicated, it's, it's no, no cost to you, and we, we do nuances. I'm not going to give any, uh, my pointers away, just surprises. When y'all come, you'll see. Uh, Christy, if you'd like to say anything. Sure. Again, like Corey said, thank you, uh, for Cliff, for having us, and thank you all for coming. Without you guys, we wouldn't be out in the community, and we wouldn't be able to share what it is that we do for the community. Um, so 
just like Fort Cliff, the way they operate, it, it really speaks to our culture as well. We're all about the community. We, we, our specific demographic is senior citizens, so we only take care of seniors. We don't take care of any other age demographic because seniors need a different, different level of care. You can't care for a senior like you can care for a young adult or an adolescent. They need more time. Um, and for, for multiple reasons, memory, one thing, being able to get around another. So there's, there's different reasons why we need to spend more time with seniors to make sure that they're getting adequate care. Um, and again, like Four Cliff, we network with the community too, and we're grateful that they're one of our partners. Um, right now we're networking, Just this is just for everybody's um, awareness. We're, we're networking with another company that's helping offer free mental health. That's, that's you know, it's running rapid here. And it's been shunned for a very long time, and it's time that we really need to pay attention to that. Um, we're, we're, we're evolving, and we have access to it now. This group is offering free counseling for people that need it. Um, if, if you want more information, our information is up here. My card is here. Corey's card is up here as well. Just give us a call. Um, another thing, is there any military in the house? Yes. Okay. Yay. Thank you. Thank you for serving. that is I come from a military. My, da my dad served 22 years in the Air Force. My sister served 24 years in the Air Force. Um, and, and being the family, uh, we know the sacrifices that you all have made. So once again, thank you for your service. Um, but I do want to touch base on there is a program. I don't know if you all are aware of this, but every time you go to the VA to, for an appointment, there is a thing called a military reimbursement program. You all aware of that? They pay you to come to your doctor's office, to your doctor's visits. There's a link. I have access to the link. If you want it, reach out to me, and I will definitely get that for you. Okay. Twenty-eight cents a mile. Is that? I think cents a mile. That twenty. That twenty cents can add up, especially if you're, you have to go frequently. Well, seventy-eight cents a mile. Eighty cents a mile. Eighty cents a mile. Just going to the VA. Yeah. All you gotta do is perform your flight every month. Once you once you register, you can just go online mm -hmm. and put the mileage in. And all you gotta do, you, you just put your, 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 your appointment date, and then your name will come up, and you just click on it. And then what they do in about a week, week three, and a half, they have to deposit check it to your mm -hmm. account. The same thing, mm -hmm. you check the deposit that you have your check account going to, they'll deposit it. Mm -hmm. okay. so, so, what do we see about that program? I have the, I have a link. I'll give you the link. It's an online link. If you have somebody that can assist you that's uh, internet savvy, that'd be great. If you need help with that, just give me a call. Everybody's always welcome to the clinic. Okay? So, yeah, we, we have the drive from the road. Yeah, we have the road. Okay. Another thing, we partner up a lot of military, or not military, I'm sorry, senior citizens or people 55 and above with disabilities. They receive an income. As we know, there's been an inflation here lately with prices on everything, right? Yeah. Um, a lot of times they want to work to kind of balance out to be able to, you know, to fulfill their basic needs with paying their bills and all those things. But they're afraid to work because they don't want to lose their benefits, right? Right. So we connected with a, we partnered with a company called Ability Solutions. It's actually right in the same shopping center as our clinic. They have a program where you can work for a whole year and your benefits are protected. So that's like two incomes in the home for that whole year. And it doesn't matter, there's no cap. You can make $50 an hour, right, $100, whatever, whatever job you qualify for. You can get that job, you can work overtime, whatever you want for a whole year and your benefits are protected. Again, if you need that information, just give us a call. Um, now, to touch back on, on dedicated one more time, I feel blessed to be working for this company because we are in a position where we can impact change in the healthcare system for senior citizens. Our number one service there, let me, let me just say this, what if I told you that 20% of the senior citizens who walk into our doors, especially in the communities that we serve, have something advertently going on with their heart and they don't even know it? Hmm. 20%. That's a huge number. That's 200 hmm. patients out of 1,000 patients. Hmm. Okay? So, or, I'm sorry. Is that right? Yeah, 200 patients out of 1,000 patients. We've all had that experience where, we're, where we, met, we knew somebody that was doing fine, right? And the next thing we know, we hear, they're gone, right? They were fine. We were just talking to them. What happened? And they just dropped like that. 
And that's because they were asymptomatic. They didn't feel anything. They were fine, you know. Our number one service that we have in our center is what's called an echocardiogram. And what that is, is it's a sonogram of your heart. If you haven't heard of this, that's a good thing, okay? Because if you had, that means you already have something going on with your heart. You've already had a stroke, a stent, something going on there, okay? The echocardiogram is a $2,500 test that we pay for, for each and every one of our patients. And on I can't, your first appointment. On your first, first appointment. appointment. We, we take the, care of that. Yes, exactly. And the reason why we do that is because we can help you get your diabetes under control, which is what we do. We manage high-risk disease, okay? We help you manage it. Taking pills and seeing your doctor every three months is not managing a disease. It's barely getting by. It's band-aiding it. Managing it is getting you to a place where you're at level. That means you have to look at your medications and reduce your milligrams if need be. There's a lot of people taking medications that got started out with high milligrams, and they never went back to the drawing board to say, okay, we're balanced out. Kept, just kept getting prescribed the milligrams. That's not good because the higher the dosage of the milligram, it can be messing up other organs in the body. That's why we have to manage it, okay? Um, every, you know, med the healthcare system knows this, but there is no money in helping people get better because then they don't take the, you know, the higher milligrams. But that's no benefit to our patients. So that leads me back again to the echocardiogram. It's the number one service. That service alone can extend your life up to five years. Um, simply because we're able to get in front and see if there's anything going on with your heart before you get a stroke, right, or a heart attack. Again, with us managing high, <coughs> uh, managing diseases, uh, high cholesterol is another thing closely associated with stroke. It has to be managed, okay? Um, what else do I have? Did you have some, Corey? Uh, I mean, you're doing fine, but, but just, just what Christy has said, we, we call it internally our THV, our total health visit is our patient's first experience. It's gonna be a series of 90 minutes of testing, blood, urine. We have our own in-house laboratory, so blood, urine, echocardiogram, which we incur their costs, and then the second time you come out will be the first time you meet the primary care doctor and you go over your test results. Yeah. They detect where you at and they discuss the managed level of care which is required. So by what she said, our patients who are following our doctor's orders and going by dedicated procedures and protocols, they're living five to seven years long. Mm -hmm. We have statistics. So we're new to Dallas, but they've been in existence for 39 years, 40, 40 plus. 40 40 plus. years and we're in 16 states around the United States. We have one, two here in Dallas, four in Houston, two in San Antonio, but Louisiana's had it over 20 years. They originated 40 years ago in Florida and everything else. So uh, a lot, our hardest job, a part, is part of our job, is I'm, I'm talking to Mr. West, and West is saying, man, I, I, I like what you're saying, and I hear what you're saying, but I've had my doctor for 35 years so he only sees his doctor three times a year. Sometimes he tries to go see his doctor, and his doctor has too wide of a patient panel to see him, so he has to wait three, two to three weeks before he can go in if he doesn't have an appointment. But at, at Dedicated, we welcome walk-ins. You let us know you're not feeling your normal self, you coming in the next day. Our doctors give away, they, we have doctors with business cell phones. So at Dedicated, all our patients get this doctor's cell phone in case something's happening. Eight, nine, ten o'clock, you call that number, and the doctor will answer it. So. Wow. <laughs> anyway, it's, it's a lot to incur in right. one conversation. That's, that's just the tip of the yeah, iceberg. There's a lot more iceberg. things that we do. But that. you yeah. really would behoove, it would behoove each and every one of you who are Medicare eligible, which everybody except for this young lady probably isn't in the room, should be, just to come see what we're about. And what Christy and I will do, we'll have a form conversation with you. We'll answer all your questions. And that point, Mr. Ray, if you come in and see us uh, after we showed you and talked with you about everything, we let you make that informed decision whether or not you want to be a part of our family. And it's no pressure, nothing, nothing like that. Yeah. So. And we don't but do a whole lot of commercial. Good. 
Yeah. Well, well, I know I and we're right up the street, y'all. Yeah, we're right up the street from this location. Mm -hmm. Oh, West Ledbetter, right here, across the street. From, uh, 1111 West Ledbetter. I ain't seen it. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. you, you're probably passing by us and not seeing us. What's the dedicated. name? Dedicated. It's a big old sign, yeah. dedicated. Mm -hmm. so. Dedicated Not to take too, uh, too much of the time. Uh, yeah, thank well, you. Yeah, I was going to say, this gentleman had a question. If anybody else has a question, we'll try to answer that. Yes, sir. Uh, my father, before he passed, he would take it somewhere between 20 and 25 kilos. Uh -huh. Right. Right. And uh, that is too many kilos. Uh -huh. hey, some of them were kept and some of them were hard. And I don't want to fall in that block like this. What's your name on Hutch. Mr. Hutch, thank you for asking that because, like, at Dedicated, we, it's, it's our doctor's uh, incentive to wean people mm -hmm. off of too many meds. Mm -hmm. well, if you need your heart medicine or, 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 or uh, uh, I'm, I'm going blank here. Diabetes. Yeah, diabetes, blood of pressure. course, the high blood pressure, wow. neuropathy, all of that you would take. But like, by his daddy, his daddy was taking probably five milligrams of, for a certain thing, and this other pill had seven milligrams of the same stuff he taken. So, he was taking too much, it overlaps, and that's what a lot of us are doing. So you have to make sure that you take that one. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We have yeah. patients yeah. right now that came in with that same, Situation right around the same number of oh, pills, oh, and we've taken them off. One, one, we have one right now at 18, Ooh. and they're down to eight. Wow. Most of them are vitamins. Yeah. And that's because, again, managing it, you got to go back to the drawing board and not be paying attention to the medication. <laughs> Christy, on this side of the room, you said sure. one patient was taking 18 meds and now they're down to eight. Yeah. They come on. Ten medications that they give me. Yes, ma'am, I see your hand. Do you have a phone number? Do we? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. We got information we're going to give out. Okay. Christy and I both have our business cards and the flyers as cards. And, uh, when our patients come to the dedicated, we give them a wristband and it has our, our front office number on it. Can, can I a answer one one more thing to, to your point, sir? The reason why, because you may ask, you know, how do we do this? How do we manage it? And, and why do we do this? Because we're full risk. We're full risk. That, we, that holds us accountable for making sure that we're doing what we're supposed to do to take care of you. Right. As you know, full risk is that we have something in it if we don't do what we're supposed to do. You know, and no other doctor's office, you know, out here that's taking care of senior citizens has that. They are what they call, um, what is it? Not, not a, well, we get on, get on, I'm drawing a blank too. It's where uh, we, we offer other services, you know, like we have uh, exercise, being and stuff like that as well. You're going to find other clinics out here that do the same thing. They do the same thing. But the difference between us and them is if you end up in the hospital, we get we have to pay for that we pay we have a partnership with the, your payer plan your payers like if you have edna well care humana, humana. Mm -hmm. if you have them if you're admitted to the hospital admitted into the hospital traditionally if you're not on a certain plan that covers everything we have to pay 20 percent and then Medi the medicare plan pays the 80 percent mm -hmm. well we have a contract with the medicare plan that says hey medicare plan if our patient under our care ends up in the hospital, that 80% that you would pay, we'll pay it. So that's how much we care about our patients. That's, that's how much we are, we are uh, certain of what it is that we can take care of. So what Christy is saying is we're full risk. We'd rather you be seen more times than have to go to the hospital. That's right. Yeah, and, and that's what we provide. We provide that service for, for the ones that like don't have an appointment, not feeling good. Come see us, and then our doctors will determine and let you know, yeah, you need to go to the hospital. So. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So you're saying if I have a procedure, let me. I'm a patient and dedicated. Okay. So I I did the the nighttime emergency does work because mm -hmm. the doctor, the nurse, and everybody did get involved. Okay. But I end up having, a, I, I had to go to an outpatient to have my heart back shot. Mm -hmm. So are you saying that y'all would pay that? I paid it. Yeah. Not, not when, when you're referred out. That, that's something like a, a specialist. Mm -hmm. But, okay. but the, the primary part of it, yeah. At first. The primary part. Yeah. Yeah. So, so by you, thank you for letting let us know. I'm Corey. Uh, that you, this young yeah, lady is a dedicated patient. So, uh, are we saying that time does work because 
my other primary doctor, I could not call. Okay. But I was able to call her. Mm -hmm. Y'all hear that? Did everybody hear what she's saying? Uh -huh. She's a dedicated oh. patient. She, she, go ahead, ma'am. I'm sorry. And I mean, they followed through. That nurse called me, called me, called me. And I thank God. Then she would call the doctor. They followed it through until they got my vital signs. So I really appreciate that with y'all. Yes, ma'am. Because I Your could family. not have done that. Yeah, yeah. And that is true about the heart. Y'all take the heart. Yes, ma'am. And then y'all take the blood. And another thing I like about y'all, when I come in there hungry, See, I wasn't going to tell her that. Yeah. Go <laughs> she said, when she come in hungry, I came in hungry, and I had some food to eat. I'm just going to tell y'all the truth. I did. And another thing I like about y'all is that I spin the wheel. Okay. And I got a number seven. Okay. And I got seven gift prizes. Okay. Uh -huh. oh. And another thing I like about <laughs> it. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. The doctor, I had pain, and the pain management was giving me pills. The doctor said, I'm too old to be on those narcotics mm -hmm. because I can fall and slip and fall. Absolutely. This is that dedicated. Mm -hmm. She gave me not a pain medicine, doctor. He didn't give me this cream. Dedicated doctor gave me some cream and you rub it on and that pain go away. Just like that. Wasn't it though? Miss Sylvia? Yeah. Okay. Thank you for saying that. Because y'all will listen to her yeah. as a patient. Before you were listening Listen, to her, no, that's and right. as a co that's right. staff member. So so thank you for that. And like, we're not perfect. We're not we are not perfect, but it's no such thing as perfect, right? Amen. Mm -hmm. so we're trying and striving, and what we do is we're accountable. We show our patients love. She didn't say about, sometimes you walk in there, you're going to hear earth, wind, and fire going, and yeah. 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 We accommodate our seniors, y'all. We're not the typical doctor's office. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, dedicated. You, you'll trust them more than just letting them speak. Uh -huh. Carter, 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 I'll be short and sweet. Um, my name is Clarissa. I'm a lifestyles coach through the YMCA. Um, hopefully, most of you guys have heard of the YSL nonprofit. Um, I'm currently here to promote our class. It's a diabetes prevention program. Um, we have a class running right now at Charlton Methodist on beginning this Tuesday night from 7 to 8. For the first 16 weeks of the program, we'll be meeting once a week. Um, and then after the 16 weeks end, we will be transitioning into meeting once a month. So every session we focus on something different. Um, it could be like learning how to cook healthy at home, um, incorporating physical activity into your daily lives, um, things of that sort. So if you're interested, I'm here if you want more information about the program. resources to those that are 55 and older. Have any of y'all ever had a problem paying your utility bill? Oh, yes. All right. We help pay for them because we get grants to pay for your bills if you if you qualify. Have any of y'all figured out, like, I only have so much money in my account, I don't know what I'm going to do. All right. We have money management. They'll help you get on a budget and help you out on those or even lower some of your bills. Has anyone ever figured out that, you know, I need to get a will made because I don't know what's going to happen when I pass? Mm -hmm. All right. We provide will, will clinics as well. So we do an array of different activities for those that are 
uh, 55 and older, we have so many resources. My particular job at this, uh, the senior stores is provide companionship. So, you know, COVID, everybody was by themselves, it was, you were lonely, you didn't know what to do. What we do is provide volunteers to go into the homes and be that friend for them, um, you know, or seniors or senior centers. Like she was saying earlier, it doesn't go, we provide a stipend. <laughs> we provide a stipend, so you get paid to go in and volunteer to be a companion. Uh, if you qualify for that, you get, I know it's not a lot, but it's federal money, so you get $4 an hour, minimum 10 hours a week to 40 hours a week. So you can range from a couple of hundred dollars to a thousand dollars a month. That is free for you. It doesn't go against any of your benefits because it's federal money. So that's just another income that you have that's coming in. You don't like want to work with another older adult, we work with children. So if you like working with children, we provide what we call our foster grandparents. They're kind of like a little teacher's aide inside the classrooms if you like working with younger children. So we have those programs to really help those to kind of subsidize some of their income. But again, we're just really a resource for all uh, older adults. Um, we can basically array of different things. So we're always here. We are located off of Harry Hines, close to the medical district, so we're right there. Um, anybody have questions about the senior source? Yeah, I have some upstairs. Actually, and it was just by talking to Mr. BJ here that I was happened to be upstairs doing the health fair, and I asked about older adults. And so there we got in. So. Free. Yeah. <laughs> free. <laughs> Yeah, I'll, I'll put some information down. I just wanted to kind of give you some more information about the senior course. You know, we're a resource for you. Please use us. We're always there to help older adults. That is our whatever information you might So I will get you out some information for that and everything. Yeah. Actually, I, we, I probably met with you. I actually work with really close with Kimberly. Oh, okay. But I, I wanted to ask you. Um, with the, and then once as far as like some some senior citizens have an issue getting medical supplies sometimes. Yes. So what I know that you all help in that area too. Yes, our caregiver support program. Yes. Okay. So what's what's the easiest way for a senior to get through to the senior support program to be able to potentially get help getting some of the supplies and what supplies do? You yeah, uh, I don't know exactly what supplies because that's another department. But you just call our main line. And they would just tell them you need supplies, they'll get the information, and then they'll leave them at the office, and you just come by and pick up your supplies that you need. There's no charge for those supplies. Um, we just have a resource that we're able to provide supplies for you if you need those um, medical supplies. Yeah, no worries. Um, yeah. Oh, yes, ma'am. I'll see there's a time. It came down. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so we do pay light bill. Uh, you qualify once a year because we've got to make, you know, stretch that money out for everybody else. We do um, do electric bills for you. I believe we do some gases. I'm not sure exactly, but we do cover some of those. So you just contact us and we'll work that and get the documentation that we need, which is just your, usually your Social Security award letter, which everybody got in the beginning of January. So you just basically show that information and we can help you out with that. Sorry? Our, our main number is 214. 214-823-5700. <laughs> yep. And you'll just tell, talk to the receptionist and say, you know, you need assistance with your light bill or you're interested in volunteering. Whatever we can do, we'll help you out. 5,700. <laughs> Any other kind of questions? Again, we're a resource for you. Just, you know, if you think of something, you just don't know where to go, contact us and we will help you out on that. Are you located in other cities in Texas? No, we are the only ones basically in Texas. Yeah. And then if you know people too, so not only do we provide companions to go in homes, but if you... A lot of you probably know people that are living by themselves and don't have anybody. You can always contact us. We'll give you a contact number to refer them to us so that we can get them a companion. All right. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
provided to our seniors, let them be known to us. Lord Jesus, we just want to thank you and let us have a really good time today. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Before we we want to know what everybody needs. So if you need some help or something, whatever you're doing a month, you can try to find information on that. So we can come back next month. We'll be hopefully have some information. And again, what do we try to do is come be free so that way like somebody help they like her like you. I mean everybody can need help. Like, yeah. especially last month, I mean, it was ridiculous. Uh-huh. So, I mean, stuff like this, so if somebody needs some help with getting the car fixed or whatever you need help with, Medicaid, Medicare, if you guys, if we're going to have a sheet around this, put down on what you need help with, that's what you're doing a month. We'll try to find some kind of resources for us so the next time we meet. We'll have that information for you. Uh-huh. Okay. We're gonna watch the film. We're gonna watch the film. So um, a few months ago, our CEO Taylor Toys got together with other black CEOs in the city of Dallas to create a little small short film of why they do the work that they do. And so we're gonna watch that little eight minute clip. You know, someone asked me one day. They said, "When was the last time you ran full speed?" And I was like, "Man, that's a..." That's a crazy question to ask someone. But you think about when you were a kid, you probably ran full speed every day. And for whatever reason, you took off in a sprint. And just think of the excitement in your heart. You know, it just starts pounding. The more mature that you become, the more you get away from that spirit of being a child. And once your imagination is gone, it's like, lose your light. I'm Taylor Torrance and I'm the co-founder and CEO of 4 Cliff. You know, but I'm so old Cliff, it's ridiculous. <laughs> My maternal grandfather started business on a convenience and grocery store in the heart of South Oak Cliff. <laughs> Those are the days that I often just sit back and reflect on. I would hear that radio station in Dallas, and I remember that they would play one speech over and over and over again. I believe it was Jesse Jackson. You know, that's something that I think about I hear that radio playing that, and I remember hearing that I am somebody, and it becoming a chant. I was in the fifth grade when my grandfather passed away, but um, I learned a lot just watching him be a leader, and also serving people. There was nothing that was beneath him that he wouldn't do, and I think that's one of the most essential qualities for someone leading anything. While I was in high school, I read an article titled The Cradle to Prison Pipeline. The anti-black racism within our school system can be measured in a number of ways. 
I saw the data for inmates in the state of Texas and saw my zip code of 75216 at the top of the list. In America today, if you are black, you are five times more likely to go to prison than if you're white. It is our responsibility not to continue to perpetuate the criminalization of young men of color. My spirit was conflicted and I was driven to the classroom because I saw that as an avenue to start early with young people. And man, who knew what that would grow to? Many of my students didn't bring all the supplies that they needed for the school year, so I was finding myself you know, at Office Depot every Sunday, buying paper and pencils. I thought about it, I was like, man, for the next school year, I want to be prepared. And I immediately called one of my friends. I was like, man, I want to do a back to school festival. And he was like, for who? For Cliff? And I was like, yeah, we gonna call it that. You know, a close friend of mine, he pulled me aside and he was like, man, this is a big deal. He was like, you gotta, you gotta start a nonprofit. You gotta start a program. And this is in the moment. And I'll never forget it. And I was like, you're right, man. All right, so start out with what are some things that y'all would like to see changed in the community that your school is in right now? Raise your hands for me. I remember one time I asked my students, you know, what were things that they wanted to change in our community? To hear a nine-year-old say they don't, you know, want to see people who are sick with drug addiction on their walk to school every day. Hear gunshots. Gave me a feeling, man, that, that uh, we were in an emergency. You think about the condition that it is to grow up in an oppressed community like that. It's something that drives the purpose of what we do every day. Did you get some time to reflect on like, real moments of reflection? Fort Oak Cliff is like a vessel. People can now come to Oak Cliff and know like there's a landing place, whether that's you know someone who's in need of resources or just a young person who's who's seeking somewhere to belong. I'm just grateful to be in the position that I'm in, knowing that those same nine-year-olds who were telling me all of those things that that they wanted to see changed in their community are now on staff as teen interns at Fort Oak Cliff and are also the ones that are out making that change. The work that we do, it does put us in a different space when you think of philanthropy, especially when you're walking in this world as a black person. You know, once we went to pick up a six-figure check, and um, when we got to the reception area of this, you know, this business building, the woman at the front desk basically told us, like, yeah, you guys here to get the furniture, just go around this way and you'll see it back there. And it's like, nah, that's not why we're here. And then when we got on the elevator, I just remember laughing about it. And, you know, like, nah, we're not here to pick up furniture, we're actually here to pick up a check. <laughs> it's funny to me, but it's problematic as well. That's where, you know, my ego could have showed up and I could have, you know, said something slick, but that's not what it's about. I think the more that we take up space in those areas, the more that, you know, we can show up authentically to demonstrate what someone from South Oak Cliff is, you know, and what they're about. We come in all kind of ways. But understanding that we all come up with the same resilience, pride, love, and integrity to serve. We lose our sense of creativity as adults because so many people have been able to tell us what can't be done or what shouldn't be done or didn't work. The best things that we can do as an organization happens whenever we can think like children really go into those hopes and aspirations of what you had before someone told you you couldn't do it. Sometimes you need a Tinkerbell to come sit on your shoulder and kind of like remind you like, hey, do you remember when you could think freely? 
move you around young people. They gonna take you back to that place because that's what their reality is. <laughs> you know, like, and that's such a creative place to be in. That's, that's so powerful to me. students now that was in his classroom. Wow. They are really out there showcasing. They still come around. Literally, they was here for spring break. They stop by and they show up. Um, and it's just, it's amazing to continuously do this work and serve this community. I am not from Oak Cliff, but I am from a city like Oak Cliff, Los Angeles, born and raised on Crenshaw and Slauson. Oh, and so I've, I've been great, great. in a community like this. Um, and so it's important for me to give back. That's why I went to school. I didn't go to school to just get all these accolades and get all these degrees for nothing. I really wanted to go back and put back in my community and really care about the people who look just like me and come from similar backgrounds. Um, single parent homes and things of that nature like me. And so this, this film is very dear to, to our work and to the, to the legacy that we want to leave because it's not really about us, it's about these kids and these babies. Amen. And so for us it's really about every day waking up, coming to this building. We create a culture here that's a family culture. We take care of one another, we support one another. It's not just a, this is not, this is, we don't call this a job up here. Uh, this is, as you can see on my back, we say servant. We are a servant to this community. And so I want to say thank y'all for showing up today because you did not have to, but y'all wanted to show up to create a community for yourself here in Fort Cliff. So thank y'all so much. I'm going to pass it over to Uncle BJ and Ms. Joyner, and y'all can get ready to get some y'all can rub on. Uh, <laughs> I think I think the most important part that we, we started for so we can help people our age, you know, for children, I mean they're gonna come, we're gonna take care of them, but we need help too. So again, we wanna make sure that something that you guys may need or something on your mind, write it down. We're gonna actually write something down today. That way next month, maybe we can have something. Also next month, we we'll plan on starting a computer literacy class. So that way we're gonna have computers and teach everybody how to work on computers. A lot of us don't know how to do that. So. And it's not gonna be a fast pace, it's gonna be individual. So it's not gonna be rushing out, you know, it's gonna be on a set pace and stuff. And hopefully, hopefully, we gotta talk to my next table about it. But hopefully at the end of the class, everybody get a computer. That's our main goal. So it's going to be so self-paced. So that's our goal. We, I've been talking to him. So hey, we, we all see Taylor. Y'all got to talk to him here. You know, they got to know. So that's our goal. So uh, we're going to actually computer classes. We, we, we may have to show up meeting a little bit more, you know, maybe every other week, so that way everybody keep it on their mind. So, yeah. I want y'all to create yourselves a committee of people who will come and create the programs and things that you guys want to have up here. If y'all want to have a step class, a yoga class, whatever y'all want to have, and I'm going to bring some cards up and I'm going to pass each of y'all one of my cards, and y'all can just call me and let me know what you guys want. I'll talk to Ms. Joyner, I'll talk to Uncle BJ, and we'll create it. We'll bring it here. Mm -hmm. well, I'm definitely, I mean, because, you know, hey, I'm at age two. So, hey, no cost. None so, 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 hey, so, hey, I get some out of it, too. So, hey, right. so, uh, I'm saying, what y'all like to do? We want to make sure that, you know, that everybody yeah. has something. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. 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 We, we can help anybody that please us. Mm -hmm. Well, y'all, uh, oh, one more thing, one more thing. Uh, hey, on our meeting, the days that we meet, I mean, we got to be home with we'll me this time, so maybe next time we have like a potluck. Everybody, you know, what you famous for, your neighborhood, your house, so bring it, you know, so that we can all share everybody the food. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Because so we, I mean, we like to eat now. I mean, I do. <laughs> 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 and I, was, uh, I told Uncle BJ and Ms. Garner this. Um, I'm going to start doing some research on some grants for you guys. Mm -hmm. So that we can keep this going. And so we don't, again, we won't cost you. We won't charge you, but... This money got to come from somewhere, so uh, I just want to remind y'all of that. And if y'all come across anything or any funding uh, resources for us, please let us know. Please let us know. Amen. Uh, said also, Tammy. So everybody, uh, 
We can just go on like tables at a time if everybody can use the sanitizer. Uh, we do have meatballs, hot wings, rice. Anybody that's vegetarian, I do have some plant based uh, meatballs here. We save them for the plant based meatballs. We just go this table first. Uh, uh, I made the spinach yet, so I got to try that and tell me what about it. Get sick, let us know. Nah, I'm not going to go like this.